Um, we'll start with the roll call. <laughs> Unless there's something I forgot. Um, who's gonna? Do I? Eric. We just move, work our way around the table, or? Yeah, just work around. Okay. So, um, chair, vice chair, get all the chairing. Uh, Commissioner Christ, present. Commissioner Marshall Martin, present. Commissioner Sean McCoy, present. Um, compliance manager Tracy B. Francesco present. Lisa Gowner, regional manager. County supervisor Kim Daniels. <laughs> and I'm going to jump in. I'm going to introduce Lauren Seeley, who is the new uh, assistant director uh, for the Walmart House and Glory that we hired. And so that was the position that um, you all approved in the budget. Um, <laughs> I'll let Lauren talk a little bit about herself, but quickly, Lauren uh, worked for the county, worked for Boulder County Housing Partner uh -huh. Authority. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren, actually, uniquely enough, was appointed by the council to be four on you. the four of you on the Housing Authority Board. Mm -hmm. What she's doing is, mm -hmm. so she is now resigned from that. Mm -hmm. Lauren? Um, we can go after we finish the roll call. But I'll okay. Ready. Or we can do it during the work code. Yeah, so Florence Elliott, this is the director of Carol Dominguez, interim, executive director. Mm -hmm. Mama O'Donnell, housing director. Kim Hall, assistant city attorney. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, yeah, we're we'll pretty sure. So, um, so, any agenda revisions or submission of documents? Okay, then we'll move on to the review and approval. Of the February 20th, 2024 minutes. I move for uh, the 20, uh, February 2024 minutes as presented. Second. So um, we, um, Commissioner um, McCoy, um, approved or made a motion to approve the minutes and seconded by uh, Commissioner Chris. All in favor say <coughs> aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> aye. And um, public invited to be heard. Do you have any members of the public? Nobody signed up. Nobody signed up? No speakers? Does anyone from the public want to speak? Three minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now we're on to um, item five, <coughs> old and new business, <coughs> organizational chart. <laughs> All right, so you have a nice big version in your packets. Um, so we just wanted to bring this to you today because of primarily from um, a couple of staff changes that we had, Lauren included, and also on the city side of the housing division, um, Christy Wisen took the housing investment manager position. And so we ended up doing, uh, you know, looking at everyone's, the needs of the organization and the skill sets and just what makes sense for the future now that we've had about two years under this um, kind of new setup, at least, since I came into this position and what we've done since. Um, so really we're talking now for the housing, city and LHA housing um, group overall, there's three main arms. The city's housing and community investment division that really does the funding and policy and um, all of that city work. And then we've got the LHA operations side, which is what Lauren is heading up, that would be includes property management, our voucher programs, and maintenance and then in the middle we kind of carved off housing development from HCI and put it in the middle because it really does cross cut across both so often um, and then that also leads room for future growth in that development arm as well as we keep going and get so many opportunities that keep coming at us um, so what you'll see here the big change with Warren's um, position, you'll see the Lisa and a maintenance supervisor. This says vacant, but we've actually made an internal offer here in the last couple days um, for that maintenance supervisor position. And then Tracy's work on the compliance and housing choice voucher side, um, all under this operations arm that Lauren is heading up. Um, so I really see the three pieces all coming together and crisscrossing in certain areas and also dividing and conquering in others so we can really get a lot done. Um, the other change you'll see on here is you'll see clinicians down at the bottom. Um, those are uh, one of 
them, they're all city positions in the Mental Health Center of Excellence model. One is going to be funded by LHA and dedicated to the suites. The other two are funded by the city, housed at the suites, co-located, but then really serving citywide efforts. Um, but just having more presence there will be really, really beneficial. So those are just adopted to be posted as job openings. So that's coming up. So those are the major changes we just wanted to report to you, plus all of any, if there's any staff changes, those are also referenced here. So quickly, when you when you look at this and you see positions that um, kind of go through the color coding, city positions, um, city positions that both have city of Longmont and LHA funding, um, probably more so for Councilmember Chris in this situation, and then a little bit for Councilmember McCoy because um, you weren't here when all of this really started unfolding. Is when the then Housing Authority Board approached the City Council regarding the situation, but what was really happening is financially, the Housing Authority was really in dire straits. And, you know, when we talk about the structure and why we did it, uh, you know, around, let's say, around 425, 450,000, and it was a little bit different because it depended on the year, was actually going into two positions. And why I say it depended on the year, because there were some years that um, they gave bonuses to the executive director. Um, that combined with the chief financial officer was, was somewhere in that 400 to 450,000 range. And when you then looked at what was happening on the operational side in terms of compensation for property managers, maintenance, they were really struggling to fill positions. So what we did as part of the arrangement, and this is why you vote on the IGA between the Housing Authority and the city, is that the city then assumed various components of that process for an economy of scale. So today, the city, the LHA is paying the city, how much do you have in that agreement? For accounting and all yeah, of Yeah, the, the blue and yellow. Um, it can end up being probably about between all of the accounting staff and all of the Well, they're not the direct staff, just like Molly, myself, and Deanne. And um, it's, about, it's a little over 100000 so yeah. it's about 125000 125, So what we were able to do is then take the executive expenses that was really in the neighborhood of 400000 and pair that down to 100000 which then allowed for 300000 to then be used operationally, which then directly pays for on the financial side, um, when we took over, they basically only had a chief financial officer and really didn't have the separation of duties on the accounting side, which is why we were failing uh, many of the um, audits. So now what we're able to do is hire three accounting positions that deal directly with just the LHA component. Um, we were then able to um, incrementally fund an, uh, an IT position that was that assists with overall we get the entire city IT department to help, but it funds some of that, and then we also get all of the services in the dark, um, orange, which is human resources, IT, risk management, purchasing, which they've helped us through a lot of issues. So the economy scale is significant because we actually have more robust services that we're able to from the administrative services side. In exchange, what that's then led us to do is take the funding from the housing authority to really adjust compensation for our property managers and our maintenance staff, which has actually helped with the applicant pool that we're bringing in. And then as we've engaged in other projects, council, the city council gave me the goal of hiring an assistant director to kind of help manage some of this. We needed it because we weren't able to spend all of our time associated with what we need to do on day to day management, looking at big picture, which is where we've hired more. And, and then what we didn't talk about is we were able to re repurpose the resource specialist position and all of this change because originally the resource specialist could only work at the suites and the lodge and park stuff. And the moves that we made, the resource specialist actually can now work across the portfolio of all the property. So, what you're seeing is significantly more resources being brought to bear in terms of the operations of the housing authority and 
this gives you a sense of where we all sit and how we work together. You can see a lot of dotted, dotted lines. And, um, so really, I think, but for the connection with the city, these resources aren't in place for the housing authority. This is really what it takes to give it what it needs, and we even need more to grow. But that's so yeah, should I numbers. stop to let the record show that um, Mr. Yarborough is here? Are you here? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as we see it here, we don't have any city consulting as of yet on that in this meeting either. Well, the consulting services is human resources, information technology. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I just didn't yeah. see the color right on there. Yeah. Facilities, mail, oh, it's so just uh, okay. All right. It does not stand yeah. out very much, so we might like change it. that color going forward as yeah. we get more. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's the same color. Yeah. yeah. And then, then when you have the the two the uh, two sheet, the C O L is how many are there? City of London. Oh, London. City of London. So okay. it's oh, si oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I'm sorry. I'm trying to. It's a lot to take yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think about the C O L for a while. Well, oh, this is, I was saying to Eric that this, uh, when I've had to put things like this together, I'm like, and then this person's name is so huge. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm just impressed. Uh, it's something else. It's really, uh, it, it lays out well. I think mean, it's clear for people to see. And, uh, and it, it is, it shows how we use our resources from everything clear over here from uh, Christina Checo to, you know, uh, Betty Marsh and how she's wrapped into it and, and Sandy and, and Zach. It's just kind of impressive to see the different areas of Longmont's, uh, you know, upper management and, and services, how they tie into this in such uh, an interesting and intricate way. Yeah, and if you really, I mean, if we built you the operational diagram, it would be somewhat chaotic because when you look at the center of excellence model that we use, everything's just crossing each other in the sense that this is more ministerial operationally how we work. It's, uh, it's really a team dynamic. And so at any point, lines are crossing in terms of getting the work done and what we try to do is stay out of the way um, because you know we're more bulldozers if we need to be but really rely on the staff to, to work across and with each other and that improves the broader team dynamic and when Paul was talking about HCI um, before I turn it over to Lauren to introduce herself Christy Weissman also came from Holder County and so you know, the cool thing about it is when we're hiring these positions and we're putting them open, we're actually, for three years ago, we not have been able to probably pull anybody from existing housing groups to now, I think people are really interested in doing the work here. And so, to me, that's you know, a testament to the broader team and what we've been able to do. Uh, but Lauren, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? Um, so, I'm Lauren Selly. I am a um, former board member. I was appointed to the, the Board of Commissioners back in 2020 before the city um, sort of took over LHA's uh, management and then continued to serve on the advisory board. I initially joined because I lived in Longmont and wanted to get more involved in housing. I worked for the county attorney's office as a paralegal supporting DCHA on their financial um, closings and other housing related things. Um, I'll tell you more about the cafe a little bit. Um, and uh, really wanted to get more involved in housing and join the community. Um, and that sort of was the gateway to me becoming a housing developer at Boulder County Housing Authority. So two years later, I got a job as a real estate developer with Boulder Housing Authority and worked there for two and a half years, built the spoke, so I did the financial closing on it and then turned around and closed the actual building, which is really cool. Um, and this entire time been serving very closely on the board with um, staff and always really liked it 
And as they, I watched LAJ sort of dig itself out of an inferno and was really impressed. Uh, I was impressed from the day that Harold came into our first meeting and was like, this is what we're gonna do. Um, and I remember thinking, wow, I really like that. I wanna, I wanna be part of that. So, um, you know, it wasn't an easy decision to leave doing development because that's a lot of fun. But I really enjoy working here. And I really always enjoy this team and all the work that we did. Um, so I'm excited to be here. And very passionate about housing. I myself am the recipient of affordable housing. My first home purchase was a city of Boulder permanently affordable condo. Um, and I really think that that's what allowed me to be able to step up and own a home here in Longmont and then now live in Louisville. But, um, you know, housing is, housing is probably the most important thing that a person can have in terms of health and stability. So, um, you know, I'm a public servant for life. And I'm just really happy to be here if you guys have any questions for me. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I don't know if you all have any more questions about encouraging it. And this is just to present. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and move on to B, the resolution for LHJ 2024-06, approving the, um, the adoption and implementation of the Housing Choice Voucher Program Administrative Plan. Um, is anyone going to? So that's me. That's me. Um, so we do this every year. Um, we update our policies and procedures, and we also. Um, update any federal guidelines that have changed. In this plan, it, there's a lot of changes, um, and they're all federal changes. They came out with the Housing Opportunity Through Modernization Act, which is HOTMA, and they implemented it this year, well, last year, and we have to um, implement it this year. Um, so a lot of the changes in it is just federal. Some of the, the highlights of HOTMA is the um, way that we calculate rents is, is changing. The amount of medical deductions that we give to elderly and disabled and um, the annual adjusted gross income, how we, how we decide that. So it's, it's, it's not a whole lot of changes, but it's, it's gonna affect some of the, the tenants negatively. Um, but we'll work through that. There is two um, changes that, that we're suggesting that are not because of the, the federal changes. Um, one is we've got a minimum rent payment of $50. So if they have zero, zero rent or zero income, they still have to pay $50. And that has caused some issues. Um, if somebody gets behind three months, we're evicting somebody for $150. And so we'd like to, to change that from $50 to zero. If they don't have any income, they can't, they can't pay. So we're suggesting that. The other um, suggestion is... So let's clarify, when Tracy says yeah. we're evicting, it's we're not, not the housing authority because when individuals have the voucher, they're with private, private placement with landlords. And so we're paying the landlords our component of the rent, which may be everything but $50. And we have seen occasions where people have benefit evicted literally over $150. And our PDVs are the same. Our project-based vouchers that are at the suites or um, at Fall River, they also have the $50 requirements so that, that we're suggesting that that goes down to zero. So um, the city would cover for LHA would cover the fifty dollars yeah. and just include it in the payment. Yeah. It'd be part of the um, half payment that we make. I think part of it gives us the ability to go to zero. We don't have to go to zero. Right? You would if their if their income yeah. is zero. If their income and is zero, but a lot of times their income could be so low that and that they have to pay utilities that it brings it down to zero right um so paying the 50. so it's the evaluation that lets us have that option 
The other thing that we've seen in terms of working with individuals is, Tracy and I do a lot of this actually, is as individuals' income changes, they need to report both increases in income and they absolutely should report decreases in income because it lets us reevaluate it. We've had situations where people have had significant life events, a car accident, where all of a sudden, because of that, they then get on unemployment because their accident is not allowing them to work. Then there's a period every year with unemployment where then there's a weird lapse. And so we routinely see issues where people can lose, go to zero midstream and it gives us the ability to work with them. Yeah, and under the hotbed, we, we now have a um, hardship. If, they've, if, they, if their rent is, let's say, $100 and they've got medical problems or they've got um, some life event that that's, throws them um, off kilter and they need to, they can fire, file a hardship request and then we can look at each one individually and um, abate the, not abate the rent, but lower the rent mm -hmm. for a couple of months um, and look at it on an individual basis. So you lower the, uh, lower the portion that they are required to pay, but the landlord still gets That's what is yeah. yes. Yes, yeah. so that we can lower their, their rent during that period of time. Um, the other, the other, um, excuse me, so what forms do they, I mean, do they, I know they can go in the office and say, hey, I've had this tragic event and I'm not able to pay my rent this month or maybe for six months. Is there a form? That, what is the process? We will, that? we will develop a form. We're not going to, we had to pick a date that we um, started implementing HOP month, the housing, um, and we picked August 1st. Okay. So we will be prepared for these changes come August 1st. And hopefully that would be like a part of this, it, would that be a part of the system we were talking about before, where if they go into the system and say, yeah. you know, I'm requesting blah, blah, blah because of this event, and then um, give me six months or whatever, and then you all approve it throughout the system. Because I think that instead of them going back and filling out more paperwork, and you know, it can be, it can be a lot, you know? Yes. Can that do that? Yeah. So we would have, it would be individual, every individual. It would be, you know, looking at each individual situation. This right. Is, hold on, this is different. So I think you're, what you're talking about is the CARES program mm -hmm. and the grocery tax rebate and, and all of those issues. Under the definition of the CARES program, as long as an individual meets criteria and other programs, they, they are technically able to be in the CARES program. So that's more on the city side of the house where I'm working with Jim and Sandy that technically anybody that receives a voucher or lives in an affordable housing property qualifies for the CARES, our CARES program. Now, it's a little bit different in that, so take village, um, just village, village, a village. Village on Maine. <laughs> In our properties, they don't pay utility bills. Okay. So as part of our CARES program, they won't get the utility reduction because there's no utility bill. They will get the rebate that we give on, on the grocery sales tax piece. And so I'm talking to, to Jim the other day, we just need to download all the participants and those that live in Longmont and convert that into the care system. And that's the first wave that we're gonna go through internally. Then um, I've also started talking to Jana County because we do know that a lot of the county residents on HCPU vouchers actually live here too. Um, and starting a transition of getting people from these programs into the city side of the CARES program. So yes, the answer is yes. There will be a migration that once you go through their process, we're not going to take it. Okay, that's, that's, that's the main thing. That's what I wanted to make sure. And I understand you still will be requiring some type of form if they need emergency right. assistance, right? Okay. How, Tracy, how long do you think um, the houses will take if there's an emergency? 
Right. Well, if it's an emergency, we will, it will be a high priority. I think I put in um, that we would make a, de a decision within seven days. Um, I don't have it in front of me. It could be 10 days, but it's, it's I think I put it in a week, seven days. But it will be quick that we will make a decision. And they, they can also, we've built in that they can also, after the initial 90 days or whatever we approve, they can ask for additional time. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. There was one other thing that, besides the, the rent, um, or the, the rent being down to, the minimal rent being down to zero, um, we also asked for birth certificates at the time of um, when they come in and apply. And um, we're, we want to eliminate that. HUD doesn't require that, and it's a burden mm -hmm. for a lot of people to get birth certificates. And it opens up um, national origin fair housing issues. So we, we, we've taken that out. Well, we know they're alive, so that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they were born. <laughs> they were born. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we might need it for you know verification of a child. Uh -huh. New child or um, yeah, age, yeah. yeah. But other than that, we're not going to require it at all. Was that reflected on here on this side? You no, see that. no, okay. that that is not on here. Okay. So you need the action on this. Yes. Yes. So, so we have a motion to move. I move uh, LHA twenty twenty four dash. Six. Second. Okay. Um, it's the resolution has been moved by Commissioner um, McCoy and seconded by Commissioner Martin. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> all opposed. <laughs> Passes unanimously. Next, so the budget approval for the Briarwood and Rail. Yeah, before uh, Molly gets into this one, again, kind of to catch everyone up to speed as well. <laughs> um, what some of you may not know is that prior to the city taking over um, operations of the Housing Authority, um, there were a, a number of complaints that were brought forward um, specifically related to um, reasonable accommodations. And so HUD began a process of looking into the housing authority. At the time, um, Captain Fedler and myself were invited by the housing authority board um, to come in and, and be part of the conversation with HUD. Um, and what ended up happening was that the housing authority at that time was put under a voluntary compliance agreement. And, and so, Really, that's, in, in layman's terms, the first step that they take before they take you to the next level of receivership and, and other issues, which we've said before, a year or two years later when we we're talking to HUD, they were about to call us to do this. So, as part of the voluntary compliance agreement, they set out a number of things that we needed to do, of which we've done 99% of them. And the last piece was really the accessibility issues associated with the property. You all, in your capacity as Housing Authority Board and also the capacity of the City Council related to the, um, I'm running all the federal funding sources, but what's the? We have a CBG funds. CBG, but we also use the ARPA, ARPA funds mm -hmm. to correct many of the accessibility issues were listed on the voluntary compliance agreement. Molly will take this one. This is part of the correction. Uh, so we completed the, the list. We've been working with HUD for a year and a half to do an extremely detailed list of every ADA correction. And it's actually a youth fast correction. So it's a higher standard than ADA, especially for the units and the common areas inside. Um, we've been working with them for a year and a half with a third party consultant to verify everything, get it accurate, correct, and then um, we made corrections in that first year and then every year we show them what we've done and photo verify and all of the things. 
it is so detailed um, that in the original 2019 compliance agreement, when HUD came out and did their initial one, which prompted them to require it to do it for all properties, um, it was things like the, the water fountain at the suites was a quarter inch too high. The dumpster at Briarwood is a half inch too high. It is so incredibly detailed. Um, so that's what we've been working on for a year and a half with HUD and our consultant. And as of next week, we will submit all of the final uh, reports to them following HUD's direction. We expect them to sign off. And that would be the last thing that the last item in the voluntary compliance agreement that they can say can wait. Um, in the meantime, we're still actually making corrections too. So now we're in year two of the corrections. Um, so with the CDBG funds and the ARPA funds in the last year, we've completed, I think it's about $160,000 worth of capital improvements at the properties. It was primarily concrete work. Um, which the biggest ticket items on the list, which is really helpful because a lot of the smaller stuff are we can do in house, but we really needed help to do those big ones. Um, so the biggest improvement made was an almost $26,000 ramp at the Briarwood Apartments, which is up here behind the old LHA office at 1228 Main. And, um, or Kim Park, I think Briarwood's at Kim Park. Anyway. Um, $26,000 to redo this ramp because it's a two level building and the ramp goes down below grade and it was a big deal. Um, now that we have that in, we actually, the we didn't do handrails at the time because we were doing, we've got concrete um, like half, half walls, but coming in now that we've done that work, now we need to put handrails on top. So um, we have the, the same contractor that did the concrete work He's provided us a quote, we have several quotes in accordance with policy, but he's ready to do the work. But we cannot give him the go ahead on the contract because we need a budget approval from this board because it was not included in budget. And that really is a front funding through the LHA general fund because I've got some CD funds being released, we've got some swaps of funding happening, and I would come in and modify that CDBG CD award to accommodate this. Um, so it's more of an approval, to have it be in the general fund for a temporary period of time while we can bring that funding in and reimburse. So the total for the handrails is 21,740, but at the same time, there was another newer issue um, identified with a landing on one of the end of the ramps and this concrete contractor could do that work for us at the same time. I have to still, um, I have to put this, this would be subject to an approval of ARPA funding to bring that one in. But what I would like to do for now, because it's something we have to do to get HUD to sign off on it, if we could wrap that in with the budget approval and then we'll come back with a plan for what the grant funding could be. Um, so that one may end up being a cost that we bear if I cannot get that funding quite sure I can, it's just not as solid as the handrails. Um, or the art one? Yeah. I've just got, on, on the city side, I just want to just, look at the yeah. surroundings to see where we are. Mm -hmm. And then you all have given me that direction that in this instance, I can do some determinants uh, for this. And so, was, so we've got to go through the exercise Swaps. financially. Okay. Swaps. This is under con concrete More work. concrete work. Do you know how much it's Seven thousand eight hundred dollars. It's a com it's a complex area to work in. Um, so the handrails are twenty eight. The handrails are twenty one seven forty. Mm -hmm. And the handrails, I know I have the funding for. We just have to make uh, moves and assuming this all assumes that council approves that in an action plan amendment. So there is some steps to be taken and assumptions that things would come forward. But even if those grant funds do not come forward then we would have to take care of this somehow, and we would just work to find another grant source to bring it in if these ones don't work out. And that would happen administratively, correct? Yes. So once this is approved, then how? Well, on the ARPA so side. On the ARPA side. Okay. Arpa side. Okay. For any changes to CDBG, we have to send it through council for an action plan amendment. Okay. Um, but that's there's steps to be taken there. So there are some assumptions here. Mm -hmm. Either way, LHA would have to figure out how to pay for this. I have a plan in place that is subject to future council approval. 
And if not, we would go to a plan B and try to figure it out as well. So the entire request at this time would be $29,540. I have a question. So you mentioned the consultant. So what exactly is the consultant? He's a civil engineer and he um, he's a retired civil engineer, started a specific ADA consulting firm. So all he does is go around and he works primarily with school districts, doing they do all of the same work that we do, um, massive lists of corrections and monitoring that they've been completed to standard. So um, he was hired after we saw that we needed all of the reasonable accommodations. Yeah. And well, not for reasonable accommodations, just That's physical alterations. Okay. Um, but HUD required us to hire a third party inspector as part of the ECA. Yeah, I mean, when you see a half inch here and a half inch here, I mean, when you when you get hit with reasonable accommodation issues, and they come in on a voluntary compliance agreement, they get they were coming in hard. They come in hard, and um, and that's the piece. And to Molly's point, the UFAC standards are more significant than ADA, and then part of the UFACs that I didn't touch in on actually came in as part of Fall Rivers project because and again this is before we stepped in when they did Fall River they needed they needed six six they built four units, and they were wrong mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. weren't built correctly so as part of some of our other projects and we look at Christmas and some of the others we also had to agree with HUD that we would add more UFAS units in those other developments to offset what was missed. Which Aspen, Aspen took care of. Yeah. So we have corrected that. I will say it is so clear that HUD was coming down with a heavy, heavy hammer in 2019. And we've been working on them since and showing progress and completing deliverables for them. And in our last conversation that we were confirming exactly what it needed to go into this round of report, we said we had a more open and frank conversation and they said yes there we can allow construction allowance of a half an inch on certain things so they were starting to see us be responsive and take it seriously and they are now being more flexible and realistic and and just having more conversations about these items rather than and so the consultant is looking at all the properties right now okay that's that's what i want to make sure because yep. i know how hard it is so yeah. 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 So I mean, the, the good news is, is we're now getting grace, mm -hmm. and um, that was what in four years. It got signed yeah. in twenty twenty. So it's it was signed in twenty twenty. We've been working on it for three years, and it's just literally been three years. I mean, you all been part of it. Of just mind numbing details that they've had to work on. So they've done a great job, and uh, and really working. We're, we're, we're 180 degrees from where we were, which is kind of a relief for all of us, I think. Mm -hmm. I think I know. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so we have a, a large list for this building since it's built in 1990 and hasn't really had a major upgrade since. And we have our consultants coming in at every punch walk, which we're going to give you a tour of some of the work that's been done after this if anybody has time. Um, we're bringing in that consultant to verify at punch. So every phase of construction that we sign off on, he is saying that it's good. So we'll have this entire property compliant by the end of construction. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the popcorn. Popcorn is going. Uh, <laughs> <Aww. Thanks. laughs> <laughs> we can't see. We got some exploratory <laughs> work yeah. going on. That was good for us. Okay. So do you need us to approve? Yep. So do we have a motion to approve the um, budget for the Briarwood handrails? Well, I need to approve the budget for the Briarwood handrails. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Okay, so um, uh, Commissioner Martin has made a motion to approve the budget for the Briarwood handrails uh, cost and um, uh, Commissioner Yarborough seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so the motion passes unanimously. Now on to the interim executive director report. Yeah, one of the things on this that I forgot to talk about that we've also uh, that we were also able to do is actually pin hole. Uh, so we actually had <laughs> <laughs> um, 
you know, for the first time in the city's history, we actually have a dedicated housing attorney uh -huh. who handles both the LHA legal work and handles the housing work on the city side. And when we really looked at how much we were spending with outside legal counsel, it was, it was insane how much was running through. We still use some of that on certain evictions just because it's, a, it's really nuanced, but that was a, a big win, I think, just for both organizations and being able to have housing. The second thing is we have some items on this, but we also really appreciate your willingness to accommodate schedules based on what we thought may have happened Tuesday night in the mm -hmm. meetings. So we're not necessarily planning to go over this. And if you have questions, we'll be happy to answer those. Um, but really allow you to have an opportunity to adjourn and then go through and get the tour of this facility. One of the things that we thought is this was a really good, unless more, if you have anything you need to know. Um, one of the things that we really thought about taking advantage of this opportunity to move is really to give you a chance to see what resignification is all about and, and why we do it. So as we talked about this building, it was built in 1990. Um, when the housing authority purchased it from the private owner, they basically just financed the purchase amount, not the renovation amount. And so obviously when you walk through the building, you can definitely see the age of the building. Um, and, you know, basic is the popcorn ceiling to, you know, how we do with the plants on the, on the ground floor and the critters that come along with that and other things and, and so this gives you a chance to kind of see the condition of the building before it's completely renovated and then get a chance to see renovated units and construction and the process that we go through and they can talk to you about the relocation process and, and how you're having to, to move folks to hotels and other locations so at this point um, i don't have anything else i need to cover lauren do you have anything Molly? So unless there's any questions on this, you all can adjourn and we can start the tour because we also appreciate the time. Well, hold on to so, commissioner comments. Do we have any commissioner comments before we move to adjourn? Sorry. Okay, so you're fine. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So, so out of kindness for our two people that weren't here, you should be contacting them with them now. That we adjourn. Yeah, well, Eric, I can I just need to have them get here and be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we could meet at an establishment afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> right across the street. Right across the street. <laughs> well, I've got a basketball game in 30 minutes. So. <laughs> 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 Who are you watching? Uh, Texas Tech.